Among America's great wonders, colorful plateaus and cliffs ascend northward from the Grand Canyon in Arizona to Utah to form the Grand Staircase. Immense step-like layers of rock spanning 600 million years. The rocks of the Grand Canyon were formed prior to the dinosaurs. They're Paleozoic and older rocks. And then we have Zion National Park, which is formed during the time of the dinosaurs. We call it the Mesozoic era, and the Jurassic is, is part of that. And then the more recent era is the Cenozoic, which is where Bryce is. So really, all the major periods of geologic time are exposed right in this immediate area. So people can study and look at how the Earth has changed over about half its history. On the edge of the Colorado Plateau, it was Zion Canyon's cathedrals of Navajo sandstone that astonished the early explorers. Described as heaven on Earth, towering monoliths will make a believer out of you. If rocks could talk, they would tell of tall, drifting, Sahara-like sand dunes. And as the wind was blowing, the sand would get laid down on the back side of the sand dune, so we get these sweeping layers uh, within the sand that are preserved. And we call that cross bedding. It's one of the main features here in Zion. And behind us here is the uh, checkerboard mesa area, and it's a real famous landmark because it has those diagonal lines from the cross bedding, but it also has a series of vertical cracks in it so that when they interact, they form a checkerboard type pattern. And those vertical cracks are because of the huge temperature fluctuations we get here. In arid country, it may surprise you that a primary architect is water. Once near sea level, uplifting of the plateau raised the region over 8,000 feet in elevation. It's still being uplifted today. And if I take rock and I start pushing it up, any rivers flowing down through that area are going to start slicing down through that rock. Rivers are trying to reach sea level, and the higher you lift the river up, the faster the water runs and the faster it cuts down through the rocks. The flat bottom of Zion Canyon formed when a landslide dammed the Virgin River, creating a temporary lake. Each year, the river moves an average of one million tons of rock debris downstream. Swift currents cut deep slots. Canyons get smoothed and polished by the abrasive force. Among them, the Narrows, a 16-mile stretch, is a divine tribute to erosive power. One of the superlative hikes in any national park, around every bend of the Virgin River, there's something special. From the plateau above, water percolates down to nourish a dripping spring. A hanging garden of moss and ferns grows right out of the wall. In a lush oasis, a moisture-loving yucca and an alpine fir thrive side by side. The narrows eventually taper to a point 20 feet wide, with vertical walls spanning a lofty 2,000 feet. People refer to Zion as a heavenly city of God. And if that's true, then I look at the Zion Narrows as God's private chambers. The Mormons came to Utah to escape religious persecution back east. For them, Zion was a godsend. The use of, of the word Zion as a name for this area relates to the Mormon faith and, and to the scriptures in, in the Bible, especially in Isaiah, referring to Zion as a place of sanctuary, as a place where people would gather, as a place of beauty and a place in the mountains. A religious refuge became a natural refuge for plants and wildlife. To soar above towering walls, Angel's Landing gets its name from an early visitor who thought only an angel could land on top of it. 
Hardy souls who make it to the summit are rewarded with a 360 panorama. A wonder among wonders, the mystical formations of the Colorado Plateau have captivated people for centuries.